If you've been following along for a while, you'll know that Andy and I love to cook when we're camping. So in this video, we're sharing another four camping meals that you can try on your next camping trip. Let's go. If you love to sit around the campfire and love finger food, this recipe is for you. Why not give Korean barbecue a try at camping? All right, so we actually um, we actually had pork belly to have as part of our Korean barbecue, right, Joanna? Yes. We had really Joanna picked out like really really good pork belly. We got an hour away from the house, and Joanna messaged us on the walkie-talkie and was like, "Did anybody pack the second cooler?" <laughs> Nobody packed the second cooler. So. We had to go to the grocery store. We could not find pork belly. We settled for pork chops. For the barbecue itself, the main ingredient is going to be pork belly. But in our case, as you saw, you can also substitute for pork chops or another meat of choice. Simply get a great fire going, heat up your grill, and throw that meat on there. Now Korean barbecue isn't all about the meat. You also need your sides. The sides that we brought with us were pre-prepped prior to heading out to camping. We pre-made a Korean spicy green onion salad that's basically just green onion mixed with soy sauce, sugar, sesame oil, sesame seeds, chili flakes, vinegar, and garlic. We also were making lettuce wraps, so we brought some loose leaf lettuce as well as some shisha leaves. On top of that, we had rice to eat along with our meal, and we couldn't forget the sauces. We had two sauce options. The first was fermented soybean paste, and the second was a sesame dipping sauce that we made from scratch. Next up, we've got some delicious chicken fajitas, and of course, they're cooked over the campfire. Take a look. Okay, we've waited long enough. It's quarter to 11. Andy said the magic words. Time for lunch. And <laughs> I was just gonna say, remind us what we're cooking today. Chicken fajitas. <laughs> Explain this process to us. Okay, so if you've followed us for a while, you know that normally we like to pre-prep some of our food before we come camping to make things easier. We unfortunately did not have time to do that, so we have to do it here. Now, chicken fajitas need to be cooked in parts. The chicken needs to go in the pan first, and then the vegetables. But it's also really cold, my hands are frozen, and I don't want to have to cut the chicken and then re-wash this to cut the vegetables. So I'm cutting the vegetables first, and then the chicken. The vegetables you'll need for this recipe include bell peppers, lettuce, tomato, and onion. You'll wanna slice your onion and your bell peppers into strips, dice up your tomatoes, and slice up your lettuce. chicken lengthwise as well. Now whenever we make chicken fajitas, we always use chicken breast. Peppers are on and cooking. All right, while I'm dealing with all of the campfire cooking, Andy is prepping our avocado, or I guess you can call it guac. We don't really make full guac. We just use avocado and a little bit of lime juice, salt and pepper.
Once the peppers have cooked down, you're going to want to add your chicken and onions back into the pan and cook a little longer all together. Meanwhile, you can start to heat up your tortillas so they're nice, crisp and warm when you're ready to eat. I think you may have overloaded it. It's the idea. <laughs> Somebody's hungry. Totally overloaded it. How is it? Everything you hoped and dreamed for? Mm hmm Okay, enough talking. Let's both eat. If you're bored of the classics, don't be afraid to mix them up. We love a good grilled cheese sandwich, but we're tired of just eating them with regular cheddar cheese. So we decided to try a new version that's a fancier grilled cheese. This one involves aged cheddar, camembert, and some thyme. Start by preparing your cheeses in thyme. Slice your cheeses and strip the thyme and load that onto your sandwich. Don't forget to butter the outside of your bread. You'll want to wait until your skillet is at a nice hot temperature before throwing those grilled cheeses in the pan. All right, Andy is master chef for dinner today. How are they looking? Good, I think. Is the cheese melted? It's pretty hot. Got a big fire going. Okay, first sandwich came off. I've been instructed to start eating. It looks, I don't know, it just looks like a grilled cheese sandwich to be honest. Mm -hmm. That is delicious. Has some freshness to it with the thyme. Oh yeah, that's good. That's good. How is it? Be 50 bucks in San Diego, <laughs> San Francisco. Next up in our recipes, we have campfire bread. Now this is something we've been wanting to try for a very long time, but we hadn't purchased a Dutch oven that we could use over the campfire. So we finally got around to trying it out and this is the result. Check it out. We're gonna make some bread. We're gonna try to make. We're gonna some try bread. to make some bread. Here's a, the pre-ferment that uh, we're using. It's been sitting here a while. Consistency still looks okay, but what we're gonna see. Got everything measured out. Oh, this is the extra flour, yeast, and salt, and the right correct amount of water. All right. Now this recipe does take a little bit of pre-planning. To start, you'll want to make a pre-ferment and it needs to be made the night before you're going to bake your bread. In our case, we made it at home and brought it with us to the campsite. From there, we mix in water and flour and a little bit of yeast. All right, we got everything mixed together. The recipe is actually super easy in, in terms of ingredients, just for water, yeast, salt, and flour see if this is successful in the wild. The mixing process continues for another three times, each time waiting 30 minutes in between.
30 minutes after your third mix, it's time to shape the bread to let it rise. Here, we're gonna put a little bit of flour on a surface. In this case, because we were camping, we just used the lid of the Tupperware. And Andy went ahead and shaped that bread into a circle. From there, he dropped it in our mold or our container in order to let it rise. <laughs> Second attempt. Okay. Better? Yeah. I guess we'll see what happens. Yeah, literally. <laughs> we let the bread rise for the day while we were out hiking, and once we came back, it was time to put it over the fire. For this trip, we specifically bought and brought a Dutch oven in order to make this bread. You'll want to put your bread in the Dutch oven pot put the lid on it and put that directly in the fire. Now, when we purchased our Dutch oven, one of the key features we looked for was a flat lid that we could put coals on top of. This is key if you're going to try to make bread while you're camping. Well, good morning. So, here's the bread we made last night in the Dutch oven. Looks pretty good. <laughs> 